Hi guys, this is Lauren with Lauren Watkins Art and today I have a very fun and simple pastel lesson for you. This is one that I think you will love if you are just getting started in pastels or you just want to switch things up. This is a monochromatic um, art piece so I just picked out a bunch of blue pastels. Um, there's some more green turquoisey blue ones, there's some navy blue colors, I picked out a variety of blues um, and having them all lined up together you can really see the differences that I had. I also grabbed them in soft pastels and pastel pencils but you just use what you have. You just want to have some darks and some lights and some variety of undertones. So see what you have, gather, gather them all up and then see how you can use it. I'm working on black UART sanded paper um, in a sketchbook that I made. And this picture benefited from using a black paper or a darker paper. So if you have one of those, they'll be great, but you don't have to use one. If you just use what you have. I used a ruler to create a straight horizon line. And then I just sketched in a few random shapes to Im imply land um, in the amongst the water. I marked where I wanted the moon to be and then I started blocking in the sky and I'm layering up a lot of my more mid-tone blues. So I had more of a periwinkle blue and a turquoise and then I have this light blue over the top that's kind of mixing them together. And then I'm taking another blue color and I am putting it off to the left and the right sides. To help create some depth in this picture, I wanted it to look like there was some trees, bushes, plants, things like that in the far distance that you don't see a ton of, but you can kind of pick out are there. And so I, I am just blocking in some of that on that left and right side of the sky. Now I'm blocking in where the moon's going to be. I'm going to make this quite a bit larger as we go along, but just taking a pastel pencil and blocking in where the sky is. And then I'm going to come in and start refining some more detail within the sky. With my pastel pencils, I sharpen them to a fine point and I'm using them on their side so that I can cover like a larger area. Um, if I held it up and just tried to use it on this point, then I would get a lot of really fine details and I don't want to do a lot of fine details. These are supposed to be in the diff distance. So I just want large areas and just implied shapes and textures, but I'm just layering up these pastels. I am like putting little bits of like lighter pastels amongst those darker areas just to help imply that it's more of like a tree or a bush in the distance, not like a solid wall of color or like a shape in the distance. So when you're drawing trees or bushes, you wanna have some of the sky color kind of peeking in and amongst the branches and leaves of the trees. Then I started working on the water and with the water, I made sure that I kept my strokes very horizontal. I went left to right on these strokes and that's going to help it read as a smooth, calm water. If I started to go up and down, it might read as grass or it might read as like really rough, choppy water, which isn't what I wanted. So I used a ruler to just reinforce that horizon line, make sure it's nice and smooth and level and then started working on this water and some of the land around it. With the water, I'm going to keep a similar concept that I, I did with the sky where I had it darker on the left and right side and then brighter or lighter in value towards the middle. And that's where the moonlight is being reflected. The tool I'm using here is called a catalyst. It's used a lot in um, acrylic paintings and oil paintings to help push the paint around on the canvas. It's like a rubber spatula without the handle. And I just love the way it blends the pastels. It kind of smudges it without over blending or picking up too much of that pastel off the paper. One thing I would do differently with this is I probably would have blended in the sky first before I put in the moon 
just so I didn't have to go around it while I'm, I was blending it in just because it made it a little bit trickier and I couldn't blend as smoothly. Not a huge deal because I did a lot more layers over the top and that kind of helped hide some of the marks from not being able to blend kind of in one smooth stroke, but just something to keep in mind. Now I'm just bringing in some of the highlights and shadows in the water. Again, very horizontal strokes. Um, I'm using kind of like a dark navy color. When I get an excess of dust buildup on my paper, I am just knocking it off into a, like a studio tray. It's just a cookie sheet that I bought. And I just kind of knock the dust off into there until I am done painting. Sometimes I'll use a garbage can. I just have something that I can just tap the dust into that kind of collects it so that there's not dust all over my studio making a huge mess. And I'm not blowing that dust all over my desk or into my face. You don't want to blow your pastel dust. Now I'm taking kind of a medium blue color. Um, it's not as, as black as it could be, but it's just a dark blue. And I'm using it to start to block in the shapes of the trees that I'm gonna have on each side of the paper, kind of where the land juts out into the water. And I'm trying to keep those shapes very random and organic so that I'm not making them look too similar or like fake. And I'm just using my pastel pencils for this. If you are using your traditional soft pastels, just try to use it up on the edge so that you don't get too thick of lines too quickly. And then I'm just kind of blocking in where I want the leaves to be as well. So just blocking in the basic shapes of those trees and then just using the, the blending tool to just kind of blend in some areas and then going over it with some pastels. Part of what makes this a fun beginner project is you are not bogged down by trying to color mix that much. All the colors work really, really well together. And so it's just more about value. So you just wanna get your lights and your darks in the right spots and get your basic shapes needed. This isn't complicated drawing. You don't have to have a huge complex drawing to get started. Very, very basic drawing skills required. And then you're just filling it in and your colors all work well together. So it's just getting some things light, getting some things dark, and it really does benefit from having a variety of blues. The other thing the working monochromatic does is since you're picking out a variety of blued colors, you start to pay attention to the undertones within them. So some blues have a little bit more of a yellow base, so they lean a little bit more green. Some blues are very neutral. Some of them lean a lot more purple or violet in their undertone. So, um, you will see the value. Some of them are very dark and some of them are very light. Some colors seemed dark until you put it next to black and then you realize it wasn't as dark as it was. So it's really teaching you value, it's teaching you undertones within a color without the stress of color mixing or anything like that. So you can see I've built up some more colors in the distance, um, darkened up the value along those side edges and along right on the horizon line to help imply some like distant land, some trees, bushes, that kind of stuff. Um, by darkening it up, it also helped make the water brighter and stand out so it wasn't too, like, too similar to the sky color. And then I've also been refining some of the detail along the base, starting to block in all the grasses. And I'm just making sure the strokes that I'm using to put in these grasses are very random. So I'm kind of like rolling the pastel so that they don't become too similar I'm varying up the length and I'm also varying up the value, so how light or dark the colors I'm using. Since these are backlit, they are gonna be pretty dark for the most part. It's gonna be mostly black or dark navy blues, but I do wanna have some other colors within it to help it stay interesting and not look super flat. Sometimes if you just use straight black on these types of pictures, it can look a little flat. So I'm just adding a mixture of colors within them. 
the clips I was using, those uh, clips on the corners, were just helping to keep the paper stable from like wiggling back and forth and to help keep the paper from rolling up. Um, my other sketchbooks I've made in the past have had a um, pastel matte paper in them, which is on a matte board. So it's a lot more flat and a lot more stable. Um, but the UART paper is a little bit thinner and can kind of curl up a bit. So just using some clips on the corners is really helpful. Um, especially like once you get the base color down, I just clip it and then it's easy to do the layers over the top and have it all blend together. So I'm just reinforcing those shadows, darkening up some areas, adding a little bit more subtle blue tones to the water so it's not too pure white. I'm adding some like more turquoise blues, some more uh, like periwinkle blues in and amongst the, the white highlights. Now I'm just taking this really like dark turquoisey blue color and just doing some random markings in the grass because I felt like the foreground was still reading a little too flat. And so kind of doing a few little marks here and there in other colors helps to kind of vary it up, keeps it interesting. It looks dimensional, um, but they are in a dark enough value that they don't read as too bright for the lighting of this picture because all the lights coming from the moon that grass is mostly in uh, a backlit but just adding some seller, subtle color differences is helping to make that more interesting i'm taking kind of a grayed down navy blue um, and just adding some details in the distance by having it be a little bit more gray based it is not competing as much and it is receding visually. Um, the further away things are, the more blue they are and the more grayed out they are. Um, they're not as vibrant, um, they're not as colorful, that kind of stuff. So even though this whole picture is blue, by having more grayed blues in the distance, it's still helping to help create that sense of depth. So now we are on the home stretch of just adding the last few details on this picture. So I'm really like bringing in details, refining them. So I am darkening up the tree. So we did kind of our base layers of the tree, but now I'm coming in with a black pastel pencil and I'm really going over and refining the shape of the tree, really amping up that contrast so it looks like it's back lit. I am adding more to it, making it look a little bit more fuller. And the benefit of layering it up like this is those lighter areas of the tree that we drew with like the navy blues um, help create a little bit more depth on this tree. So it's not just like this black shape. It looks like there's depth to it that there's some um, and, and it looks more three dimensional. And um, the tool I was using to blend out some of that tree it's called a clay shaper. It's just a little like pencil thing that has rubber on the end and it works similar to the tool that I showed you earlier where it kind of just smudges it and kind of softly blends without picking up too much pastel. So now I'm just refining some of the details. I had a little bit more of the sky color kind of peek through some of the branches on the tree, refining some of the moon, um, making a little bit more of a glow around it, making the moon kind of our brightest spot. So it's the pure white. And then I'm gonna take this clip off the corner of the paper and just filling, just finish filling in the details on this tree. I wanted this tree to look like it's taller than the other one, so I'm having the branches kind of extend off the page. Then I'm going to do the last few details on the grass. I'm just taking my pastel pencil and kind of just rolling it and kind of flicking my wrist. And I'm just making some of these blades of grass just a little bit longer than the others to create a little bit more variety. If you are feeling stuck and you don't know quite what you want to do with the picture, feel free to take a break and then come back to it with fresh eyes. That always can help you know what needs to be tweaked or adjusted. But I was happy with this picture. So I signed it with this dark turquoise color and then decided to do a few little grass strokes with this turquoise color just so my signature didn't stand out too crazy much. 
and add a little bit more variety to the picture. But here is the finished piece. I hope you enjoyed this super simple tutorial and I hope you test it out. If you do, feel free to tag me in your pictures. I am on Instagram and on Facebook and I would love to see what you create. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye.